Hey guys, welcome to the video. My name's Hugh and I'm from Home Network Solutions Berkshire. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a VPN to remotely access your network or somebody else's network from anywhere in the world, provided you have an internet connection. We're going to be doing that with uh, a TP-Link Armada router. This is the ER605. Um, the reason I've chosen this one is because um, it's a great little router in terms of value for money, cloud controlled, um, and we use these quite often when we want things like VPNs. So um, it's not like, I wouldn't put a big business on it or like a serious network on it, but for like things like restaurants, pubs, um, like homes, obviously, um, small offices, things like that, this is absolutely perfect. And the, the great thing about it is it's got a whole little host of features and it's cloud controlled. So it means that we can, um, you know, we can make use of things like VPNs. And there's a couple of other videos we've got on the channel as well, where we do things like URL filtering and things like that, which are all available on this router. So I do like this router. If you do want to buy this router, you can get it from our retail site, wifi to buycom um, I'll put a link to that and this router in the comments below. Um, and basically, we're going to set this up. So we're going to be doing this on the Amada controller software. Um, there's a few ways that you can do that. And this video is not about how you set that up, but uh, you can either do it like hardware. This one in this case is running off a server. You can run it off a PC or a like a laptop. Or um, in fact, Amada have also got their own, like you can pay for it. You know for, for cloud services as well um so there's lots of ways to do it but this way means you can remotely configure the router and then remotely access the network through the vpn so that's that's the that's the idea um it's a bit of a funny setup i've got here i've got a mac in front of me which uh, the camera's set on and then i've got a laptop just here and then essentially i'm connecting to the internet on the laptop via phone and the reason i'm doing that is because i'm in the same local network as the router and i don't want i want to test this vpn properly so we're going to hotspot to the um hotspot to the phone and then that means that um that we're getting that proper internet connection we're, we're, we're testing sorry we're testing the vpn properly so let's get on with this right so the first thing to do is to go um into your controller and then uh you're going to get presented with a dashboard which we can see here and then you go down to settings on the left hand side click on settings and then you very clearly see in the settings there's one called vpn so you literally just click on that and then there's you set it up as vpn and vpn user we're going to start with vpn so we'll create a new vpn policy just to remind you of where you can buy this router i'm going to call our policy wi-fi to buy um, and we're going to enable that and then we're going to go uh we're going to we're not going to do site to site vpn that's a different type of connection we're doing client site vpn and that's because essentially we're going to be coming from like a laptop so we're going to be using this laptop to connect uh into into the network um and the purpose of this what i'm going to do in this video is i'm going to show you how i would connect to a cctv network recorder i'm also going to show you how we can use putty to access um like ssh into say an access point etc so you might whatever your requirement is and, and need to get into that network then we should be able to do it with uh, with this uh this vpn okay so we're going to client to site vpn um and then here we've got vpn type what we're going to be doing here is open vpn so we're going down to open vpn selecting that we're going to put a password on it it's going to be a very secure one um, and then we'll do that as UDP. You can change this network service port and I would change it. I'm not gonna change it for the purpose of the video, but you, I, you would change it normally. And you've got, obviously you've got your options there on which ports you're gonna use. You could pretty much select something pretty random and that just keeps it a little bit more secure. Okay, uh, local network, we are going to go for network rather than the custom IP. So we're gonna, we're gonna select the whole network. So local network, uh, we're going to select that. So we've only got the LAN here. So we've just select the LAN. If you're using, um, if you're using VLANs, uh, you might have different networks, and you might want only one to be able to get to uh, to to the VPN. So we're going to do um, you you would select that. But in this case, we're just going to use the LAN. Right. So the WAN. If you've got more than one WAN running, then you've got to select which one you want to use. I'm going to use WAN one in this case. Um, and then the IP pool, oh, the IP pool is basically um, the pool or the, the IP addresses that are going to be used for that VPN. So we're going to make sure that that's not on your LAN, essentially. So it's not the same as your LAN. It has to be a different subnet. So we call this 
and I'm going to go 100, 0, and then we'll put 24 because we want 254 IP addresses. Uh, DNS, we're going to go 8.8.8.8, .8 .8 .8, which is obviously Google's, 1.1.1.1, and that's also Google's. Okay, so that's it. Not too complicated at all here. Um, if you're doing this yourself, there's not really much you're going to change other than IP pool, you might want to change that. Selecting your WAN and obviously giving it a different name. So that's all pretty simple. Right, so we could press create. Sometimes this takes a little while. Other times it seems to go through straight away. I haven't really worked out what the logic of that is. Um, sometimes when you go to do the next part, it takes a little while. So you can see here the VPN all set up, it's enabled. Um, you can see that it's that client site as we discussed, OpenVPN on the LAN and the WAN. And then over here, we've got an export, edit and delete. So we want to click on this export. And basically that's going to download a file, which is then going to allow us to use um, the service. So press export. Now I'm on the same machine I'm going to be using that file on. But if, you, uh, if you're going to be setting this up and then sending it to someone else, or you're going to be using it on a machine and obviously you need to try and transfer that across, you can just email that file. But if you want to keep it a little bit more secure, then obviously there's other ways to do it. So that, that file we need to keep secure because we're going to use that for the next part uh, where we access from the computer to the network, if that makes sense. Right, so VPN user is the next bit. So this bit at the top here, we click VPN user. And we need to create a new VPN user. And this is essentially like the laptop here. So this laptop I'm going to use to remotely access uh, the network. This is essentially the user. So we need to have a user uh, account for this for this laptop and for myself. So we will go username. We're going to call that Wi-Fi to buy again, just to make sure you don't forget that. Um, and then we're going to go for a really Secure password one, two, three. Uh, protocol is OpenVPN. And then we're going to select the OpenVPN server that we've got. Now, obviously, if you've got more than one OpenVPN server, then you can pick which one there on that list. But we're just going to go for that uh, one we've just created. And then we're going to press create. And that's it. So from the Armada side, we're pretty much done. The only other thing you might want to do is if you don't know the IP addresses of the devices that you want to access, you might want to do that. Now, I've just written a couple down. I've got an access point and I've got the uh, MVR, so CCTV MVR. Um, both of them are here on my little bit of paper, so I know which ones they are. Okay, so the next stage is to download and install OpenVPN. Now, I'm not going to teach you suck eggs. I'm not going to, I'm not going to show you how to download that, but I have put the uh, link to that uh, software in the uh, comments. And then basically, once you've installed it, it will pop up and it looks like this. Oh, so let me move that down. Uh, yeah, it looks like this. So we get presented with this with a, uh, via URL. We're not going to import a profile via URL. We're going to upload that file. And that file is the one that we had, uh, we downloaded a minute ago. So if we go to that, Oh, yeah. And then it's gonna ask us if we wanna download that file. I'm gonna say yes. A username, obviously you've just gotta remember what you set as that username. So ours is Wi-Fi to buy. And we're gonna save the password, ours you have to type in every time. So we're gonna go password, one, two, three. And we're going to connect. Now you can also, I'm not going to show you this bit because obviously it's not a peer address, but I can, you can change the profile name. So if I wanted to call that Wi-Fi to buy, again, I can just put that in the profile name up there and then I can say connect. Now this will take a minute and it's straight in. So you can see that was very, very simple. If you've, uh, it as, as we know, I am on the phone, so I'm hotspotting here, so I'm not on the network. So although I'm in the same building as the router, I'm not on the local area network, but now I am connected to it. And that's as simple as it is. So this VPN is slightly different to some of the other VPNs. It doesn't give you the internet connection. Um, it basically allows you just to access those um, IP addresses. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go and open a new browser window, and then I'm gonna try, and in fact, let's ping it first. Let's do a, ping, a command and a ping. So if we do a command and we're going to ping uh, 192.168.200.47. So this is the MVR. So we're going to ping that, see if we get reply. So we get reply straight back, which is brilliant. 
And then we're going to ping the access point, uh, 192.168.0, uh, sorry, .200.108. So that's the IP address of the access point, ping, ping, ping. Okay, so we're getting a good reply from that, so it all looks good from that side. The next thing I want to do is I'm just going to go to a browser window, so we'll open a new window, and I'm going to type in that IP address of the CCTV MVR. So we've got 192.168.200.47. Oh, I don't know what I did there. 192, sorry, 168.200.47, that's it. Press enter, and there we go. So this is the Uniview MVR. We've accessed that MVR, and now we're presented with the login page. We need to download some plugins to get that to work. But that's the, that the principle is, I could be anywhere in the world, log in, get straight onto the MVR, log in with that username. Now obviously, you wanna make sure that you're not giving this VPN access to anyone because they, they are now effectively in your, in your network. So, We've proved we can get into the MVR. We've proved that we can ping the things that we want to ping. The next thing I want to do is I'm going to show you something really useful, which um, like for a lot of people won't be uh, something you're doing all the time, but it's quite useful for us. Um, if you want to SSH into a device on this network, then you can do. Uh, so if we go to PuTTY, uh, and we're going to use this to SSH. So we go to the IP address of the access point. So this is the access point, uh, the wireless access point on the network. And the reason why you might want to do this, for example, is sometimes you get access points don't behave themselves properly, or there's a little bits and pieces you want to do. You might have to just get into the uh, into the interface to kind of give it a kick. Like for example, factory reset it, or you might want to. Uh, like upload a firmware or things like that you're not able to do in a controller. If there's like a little glitch in the software, then you can often use SSH just to kind of sort that out. So um, I will go to the IP address of that access point, which is 192.168.200.47. Uh, Press enter. This is a sign it's worked because you get this, uh, do you accept this? And then we're getting a login as. So I know for a fact that that is a Ubiquiti access point. I'm not gonna log in, but I'm just gonna show you that I could log in if I wanted to. So there you go. That is the simple, a really simple VPN to use. Now, like I said, we use these in places where we want access to certain parts of the network, and we don't want to spend a load of money on it, or we don't want a client to spend a load of money on it, and we use these little TP-Link uh, routers. The great thing about TP-Link as well is that if we're running this uh, this software on a server, is we can have loads of these and just keep running it all on the same controller software and just, just on different sites. So it's a really nice little solution. If you are like a security company or maybe an IT company and you do want to be able to get into people's networks, this is a great way to be able to do it. Or even if it's you're just a home user and you want to be able to like get into your own network to access stuff, then this is a good way to do it. Um, once you've done with the uh, VPN, you just click on the uh, open VPN again, and then just literally just click it off, and that's it. And obviously we've only got one VPN service running here at the moment, um, but you could literally have loads of sites. So like, you know, every site you want to go to, or every uh, place you've got, so say you had multiple properties, or you had multiple businesses you're advertising, uh, advertising um, at clients, etc. then you can obviously just have all of those stacked up, and you can literally just click on them as, you, as and when you need to access them. Now I'm not going to go into firewalling on this video, but it would be it is a very good idea to lock your network down once you put in a VPN, so that you can only or anyone can only access the parts of that network that you want to get. So in this example, we might just lock down so that the CCTV and the access point can be accessed. Um, but we'll do that in another video. Thank you very much for watching. I hope it's been useful. Please put any questions and uh, question questions and comments in the. Uh, in the comments below and uh, I'll try and answer them and if we've got some kind of uh, questions that everyone's asking then uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll maybe do another video. Please do subscribe. Thanks again. See you later.